Looking back at those videos uh, that I did in the past has been nice. Going into the Rode Pod mic, going into the AT2020 again with those videos that I redid was really cool. And it really got me back to the roots of what this channel was made for. And not necessarily the only thing that it was made for, but the, the, the reason why I started it. The love for microphones, love for audio, love for content creation. And the reason why I go back to these two is because they're a couple of the first videos that I did. Uh, it was very uh, near and dear to me to cover these microphones because they are very important to a beginner content creator, which in some uh, ways I am, but I've gotten to the point where I can teach those beginner things to others and help them learn from maybe some of the mistakes that I've made or maybe even help you along the way when you make those mistakes because the best way to learn is to learn from your own mistakes. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin and in this video we're going to be revisiting the AT2020, the Rode Pod mic and having a bit of a showdown between the two of the $100 mic option. Now, this doesn't mean necessarily that the Rode Pod mic or the AT2020 is a better microphone, but maybe you might like the style or the sound a little bit better, like I did in my PD70 versus the AT2020. Very similar concept behind it. Before we get started, if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, please leave it down in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions about the AT2020, the Rode Pod mic, microphones, gear, all that stuff as always. I love having conversations with you guys and uh, just good positive vibes that we have in there and if you want to ask me more directly i stream on this channel every wednesday and saturday in the afternoon uh if you keep an eye out you'll see where i uh post the time uh for my stream on my twitch stream and on my youtube stream that being said about an hour on this channel doing some dot to dot art and i switch over to twitch to play some video games and of course if you found this video helpful entertaining or anything whatsoever please leave a like and consider subscribing Okay, so the first thing we're going to get into is the builds of these microphones, comparing the two. And I could say right off the bat, both of them are built like tanks. One a little bit more so than the other, uh, probably because it's a dynamic microphone. So the AT2020, classic look. I won't bore you with it. I, I talk about it all the time, and it's a classic look. It's very seamless and very easy to look at. Maybe not a flashy microphone, but it definitely has a sturdy build with metal pretty much all around. There might be a little bit of plastic, but the microphone is pretty much all metal. The grill is fantastic. It it works out great. And I've dropped it a couple of times. I beat it up. I've had it for four years and it still works pretty good. Actually, to be honest, it worked great. <laughs> On the other hand, we have the Rode Pod mic, which is without a doubt the heaviest microphone that I've ever used. It's built like a tank and emphasis on tank. And I've said this in my last video I did on the Rode Pod mic, thick with an extra C, that's basically it. And two tone, very nice, grill, very sturdy. And it, it's just, it's a good looking microphone and you notice the weight. Not to say that it will be an issue with uh, putting it on a stand or putting it on a boom uh, arm like the Blue Compass or the Rode PSA-1, but that's something to consider when you're buying a microphone is the weight. So one last thing with the builds, let's talk about the weight and the dimensions of these two microphones. We're gonna go through this quick so you don't have to worry about like crazy stuff. If you're not interested in this part, just go to the next chapter and uh, we'll cover some other stuff on the tech specs, all that stuff. So first off, we're gonna talk about the AT2020. It is weighing in at 12.1 ounces or 345 grams. And then as far as the dimensions are concerned, it is 6.38 inches or 162 millimeters long and 2.05 inches or 52 millimeters maximum body diameter. Now on the other side, we have the Rode Pod mic, which is weighing a lot heavier at 937 grams, which I'll put up the equivalent on the American side next to it, because I can't remember it offhand and I didn't write it down. And then we have the dimensions at 172 millimeters by 109 millimeters by 62 millimeters. And that is basically your length, your width, and your height in millimeters. And of course I put up the 
American equivalent right next to it. So you guys know uh, all the measurements and all the variations of those measurements. And of course, you're going to notice the big thing. The weights are significantly different. Uh, the size of them, not so much, but the weights are the big factor. Okay, so the next thing we're going to get into is talking about the specs and the tech and what I like to call techie talk. Basically going over how these microphones are put together technically on a spreadsheet and a spec sheet, a manual, whatever you're going to see in the manual, all like the circuitry and all that stuff. If you watched my video on both these microphones, I covered this section. So if you want, you can skip to the next chapter and uh, we'll get into other things. But if you're interested in the comparison of the two, I won't bore you too much with it, but I will cover my basis of what's important. So to start off, we'll go to the Rode Pod mic, and it's a dynamic microphone. It is a cardioid polar pattern, basically picks up in the front, rejects the back, a little less on the sides, but that's basically how it works. It's a standard polar pattern that is used extensively within microphones. The other two obvious things is it has an XLR out, so you can go into a mixer, recorder, all that stuff and does not require phantom power because it is a dynamic microphone. Two more things that we're going to get into is the output impedance and the sensitivity. The sensitivity is negative 57 decibels, which is not necessarily too low, uh, especially for a dynamic microphone. A lot of dynamic microphones have a low, low sensitivity, so you need to bump up that gain or use something to help it like a cloud lifter. This one, not necessarily that bad. Uh, you can use a cloud lifter to take some pressure off the preamp, but you don't necessarily need to. It also has an output impedance of 320 ohms. If you're interested in uh, more stuff on that, let me know down in the comments. We'll talk about it. Now let's get into the specs of the AT2020. It's a condenser microphone. Pretty simple. Requires phantom power. Cardioid polar pattern. Picks up in the front. Rejects the back. A little bit on the sides. And it has an XLR port on the bottom, which means you got to go to a recorder or a mixer to make it work or pick up the sound or whatever you want to say. I'm having trouble today. <laughs> the last two things I want to cover is it has a sensitivity of negative 37 decibels and it has an impedance of 100 ohms. So those are crucial differences when it comes to these microphones, but it's not necessarily because one's better than the other. It's because of the make of the microphone. One's a dynamic and one is a condenser especially with the sensitivity uh, that is one specific thing that has to do with just the way the microphone is because one is different than the other and it's just the way they're built not necessarily because one's better than the other but if you want to talk about maybe better in sound or better in the tone that you like let's get into the frequency response and talk about the differences because this is where they really get different so if we pull up these frequency response curves, you notice that the AT2020 is fairly flat, at least comparatively speaking. The Rode Pod mic, on the other hand, has been tuned a lot, and it has been manipulated in a way to capture a broadcast sound, a podcast sound. That's what it's made for. It. I don't want to say... I was going to say novelty, but it's not... It, that makes it sound bad. It. It's really a specific job that you're looking for it's 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 made for a specific thing meaning a broadcast a podcast some type of thing like that the at2020 on the other hand a little more flat a little more flexible with how you can use it that's why i felt like the pd70 was more comparable to this microphone but that's a good thing to consider when you're buying these you're looking for a tone you're looking for a sound uh if you're more of a person that knows how to manipulate an EQ and uh, edit a microphone, maybe the AT2020 might be more for you. If you're less inclined with your uh, skills as a engineer or someone who doesn't know as much with EQ or effects or whatever, uh, the pod mic might be more for you if you like the sound because you have to do less work. It's tuned for you right off the bat. The AT2020 is tuned, but not like specific. This one has specifically tuned so you can get a sound. You could fix it in post. You could emphasize the highs, emphasize the lows, but you could say that about any microphone. Like I said, the pod mic is made for people who know a little less 
Uh, and that's not insulting. That's that's just the way of how they marketed it and made it and just the way that they wanted people to understand it. But to give you a little bit more specifics on both these microphones in the frequency response curves, uh, the pod mic is pretty much like a lot of presence in the highs. They, they boosted that up. They got a little bit of bumps in the midsection, which is very strange and a very little roll off on the back end. So there's more bumps and peaks and valleys on the pod mic than the AT2020, which ties into a microphone that would be more user friendly than the AT2020, depending on how you look at it. For me, I prefer the frequency response of the AT2020 because it gives me more flexibility of how to use it and how to manipulate it. The pod mic, on the other hand, sure, it can be manipulated. Any microphone can be manipulated, but it's a little less friendly to that. And it's it, it was made a certain way to just be, here's the sound, and if you like it, cool. All right, so we went over the microphones, the builds, the tech, the specs, uh, the frequency response curves. Put them through the ringer, and you've heard it in my little studio here. Mildly treated, nothing crazy, but it's treated enough that you don't have to worry about silly things like bad reverberation. That's the big one that I wanted to avoid. But now, we're going to be going into two other environments, as you've seen in these revamped videos. We're going to be going into an untreated room and my booth, which is literally right above me. And we're going to show how they sound and how they react to sound. But before we do that, let's do a silence test. I'm just going to be quiet, and you're going to hear the natural sounds from this microphone, possibly some noises outside, because there's only so much I could do with this room. But you're going to notice the noise, the natural noise in the microphone. I'll boost it, and I'll let you know in the corner how much I boosted it. But here you go. All right, so there was a couple of noises here and there, a couple of like rumbles maybe. You guys let me know. Uh, obviously, I won't know until I'm editing this, so you guys let me know down in the comments if there's something that was disturbing or something that you were not okay with because I'd like to hear your comments. I'd like to do things different a little now. Uh, obviously, I'm not listening live right to these uh, microphones, mostly because unless I'm in a booth, I really don't like the sound of it. Um, and it's tougher to listen live when you're not in a booth for some reason. At least for me. That's just my opinion. So that all being said, let's go into those other rooms and see how these microphones face off against each other. All right, so we're in the untreated room, or not-so-treated room, carpet underneath us with the pod mic, the AT2020, and the PD-70. Forget about the PD-70 for this video. I've set this up so that I can do all these tests all at once. So PD-70 for this video is just along for the ride and looking purdy. So the main focus on this is our pod mic and the AT-2020. And of course, the first time I did this video, I didn't put these through a boot test. I didn't put it through an untreated room test. So this is what you're going to hear. I'm about six inches off both of them. And uh, they have their pop filters on. And I'm not going to take them off. I, I Plosive tests are plosive tests. You can notice it regardless of what room you're in. You know the quality of the diaphragms and di the quality of how the audio is with and without a pop filter. So I won't go into that in this room. The point of this test is if you're in a room similar to this about a 11 by 11 room and eight foot ceiling whatever it is uh with reflective surfaces such as drywall frames glass behind me tv possibly with glass there as well so just keep these in mind when you're hearing this because you may be in a similar room or something maybe even exact a lot of rooms are like this size so maybe your bedroom's like this and or your studio's like this as well so 
it'll be a good example to take into consideration before getting one of these. Now, before we do that rejection test, let's do a couple of claps and see how they do react to the reflective surfaces in this room. So what you had there was just maybe some reflections off the glass and all the stuff that I mentioned before. So the next thing we're going to do is off axis coloration and rejection, all that stuff. As I said, they are both cardioids, so they pick up in the front, reject the back, you know, that classic heart shape. So this is what you're going to hear about 180 degrees behind the microphones. And of course the camera's in the way and all the other things are in the way. So you might encounter this as well. So this is simulating uh, maybe some fan noise or just noise that could be right behind it, whatever it may be. So just keep this in mind when you're using these microphones and uh, what may be around your microphone and maybe move some stuff around if it could be a problem. Now we're about 90 degrees away, uh, a little further back on the AT2020 side. And this is what you're going to hear with the rejection of sound or maybe even lack thereof. I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comments what you think. And finally, we're on the opposite side, about like two feet away. And uh, this is going to be your off-axis sound rejection, roughly 90 degrees, nothing exact. I ain't bro breaking out a protractor on this, so this is what you're going to get for a rejection test. All right, so there's your rejection test and your untreated room quality as far as... Uh, what you're going to encounter with all these microphones or both of these microphones in this case. All right, so we're in the booth right now and we have the pod mic and the AT2020 uh, with us. And these are budget microphones, as I said in the intro and in the studio section. Uh, this is getting the best audio I could offer you. Uh, meaning that there's minimal distractions, there's minimal things going on in the background, and uh, you're going to hear what this microphone has to offer, just however it's going to, how it was meant to be heard, uh, meaning without any outside noise. And of course, a lot of times you're probably not going to be in, have access to things like that, uh, like a booth or something that you can uh, manipulate the environment to make it audi audibly friendly. Um, it's 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 very difficult to get a situation like that. And I built this booth. If you are interested, I did a video on this booth, uh, building a hundred dollar booth or so. Not it's a little bit more than a hundred dollars uh, when I modified it a little bit more, but it's roughly about a hundred dollars. So next up, we're going to be doing a quiet test where I stay quiet, and you're going to hear the natural sounds of these microphones. I'll let you know in the corner how much I boost it. Okay, so they're fairly quiet. Uh, the PD-70, I feel, has a little bit more noise. Uh, that's not in this video, obviously, but uh, comparing it, these three microphones, I will have a video comparing all three of them together. Uh, that's my finale of February. I uh, plan on having that out at the end of the month. And with the pod mic and the AT2020, they're very different microphones. I feel that... Uh, they're stereotypical microphones of their categories, meaning the AT2020 is a stereotypical condenser microphone, very standard, very simple. The pod mic is a very stereotypical, I don't want to say stereotypical, but it is a simple uh, dynamic microphone. I don't think it's stereotypical in the sense that the frequency response is manipulated a little bit more so than your stereotypical dynamic microphone but it is your stereotypical broadcast microphone so that's something to consider now if you were in a booth like this you would probably be using it for voiceover work so this is what you're going to hear in a treated environment and what you may encounter with uh, your voiceover uh, performance uh, 
I lean towards the condenser microphone in general for voiceover stuff because it gives you more detail and uh, you can always fix some of the specifics in post. Uh, dynamic microphones, unless you're really looking for a specific sound or if you're really giving it to it, I would consider uh, getting a dynamic microphone if your performances are a little more aggressive and loud. So it depends. It depends on the sound. And when you're comparing these two microphones, it's not a matter of which one is better. It's a matter of which one you prefer and which sound you like more. For me, I like the ED2020 better because I may have a bit of a bias because I've had it longer, but I feel that it's a better sound for my likings and my uh, use. It, it's not right or wrong. It's my opinion. So that's that's just how I feel. So that is the AT2020. That is the Rode Pod mic. We went into a bunch of stuff, a bunch of details, uh, all the specs, tech, went into the booth, my studio, uh, an untreated room, and it really showed how well these microphones react to different scenarios. And that's what I really wanted to do with these revisited um, videos. I want to give you guys multiple environments, multiple scenarios of what you may encounter with these microphones and what to avoid possibly because those untreated rooms can really screw with your audio. So yes, again, thank you for watching. Uh, hope you all enjoyed it. It was it was a good uh, revisit of these. And if you have any comments about these microphones, if you have any questions about these microphones, please leave them down in the comments section. All I ask is that you be positive and constructive. That's all I ask. And, uh, of course, if you found this video helpful, entertaining, or anything whatsoever, please leave a like and consider subscribing because I got a bunch of videos planned. I got a ton of videos planned for the rest of March. The, for the rest of February, March, and April, I have all planned out. So, mic reviews and gear reviews. We're going back to the Zoom F6 because that's all I do on this channel is every month put out at least one video about the zoom f6 <laughs> who knows maybe even we'll get a 1.7 update on the zoom f6 so i'll let you guys know about that uh i think i'm gonna be doing one on the headphone routing on uh, the zoom f6 sometime in the future so something to look forward to and subscribe so you know when it comes out and that all being said be safe be kind and i'll see you in the next video Evie, don't don't do me like that. Don't don't give the the twerking. Don't be twerking on Big Ben. Stop twerking on Big Ben. Stop it. Good God, girl. I'm all about if you got it, shake it. But come on, man.